Paige here back at NextFab in Philadelphia, and I really want to thank you all for the love you showed my last um, video. Today we're going to be working on some bucket hats. Um, so I'm often left with odd scraps after I've cut out the garments and or bags from the quilts. Um, and one of the things that uses up those scraps really well is the bucket hat. Um, I do three sizes, small, medium, large, and they're all lined. And I've already cut out some of the quilt pieces for the bucket hats, um, which have a brim, a band, and a top. And um, I do need to cut out the linings because I do like to line the bucket hats. Um, so I will be cutting out those linings and potentially cutting out some more of the um, actual quilt pieces. I want to show you two different quilts that I thought would work nicely with the bucket hats. So first is this double wedding ring quilt, which I really, really love. Um, the edging is, is really neat. Um, there's this type of edging called a knife edge, and uh, that's when the quilter originally folded the quilt back and the quilt top in on itself and then hand stitched around. And this one's really special because it's that hexagon shape. So this could not have been an easy task. I really love this um, grandma's flower garden quilt because typically there are three rings, but this woman actually did it to five. Um, so I'm pretty, pretty chuffed with that. Um, and I just think the patterning lays, it is a great pattern for the bucket hat because you can get the top and get a complete hexagon series. And then with the banding and the brim, you can um, pull in some of the other colors. So that is one quilt I might use for that. This is another quilt. Again, it has fabulous patterning and it's got this black fabric, which is really, really unusual. So um, you don't see black that's um, not tattered or shredded in quilts. Um, and this one is the more typical binding. So the binding is actually sewn to the top of the quilt from the top. And then on the reverse side, it's tucked under and it's hand stitched into place. And like this woman's just so fabulous. I don't know if I would be so, um, so not lazy enough to switch the color of the thread from white to orange, but she did that. She took a lot of care with that. So, and again, this one is something that works well, would work well with the hat because you could get the white circle, you could get the white area for the top of the hat. White is nice in a hat because it reflects the sun. Um, and then you can get the brim and the banding in some of the colors. So maybe later on we'll cut some of that. Right now we're gonna cut the, um, we're gonna cut the um, lining. So I need two pieces each of the band, two pieces each of the um, brim, and one circle. And they're cut on the fold. And I can make this a little smaller so not to waste fabric.
right, so now I have got my um, five pieces cut out and I am going to the machine and I am going to sew one hat start to finish. Um, so when I'm making these for sale, I tend to batch them out. So I might cut all the quilts all at once and then I cut all the linings all at once. And then there are specific orders of operation with the hat that I'll do all the brims and then I'll do all the bands and then um, attach the lining, etc. But I'm gonna show you start to finish how I make this quilt hat. So if you've never used an industrial machine, it's not as scary as it seems. Um, and actually what I really love about it, it's super quiet. So the machine is on, you can't hear a word. And what I'm gonna do is start with um, sewing the brim pieces together. It has a knee lift, so you, while there is this back here to lift up the presser foot, there's a knee lift, which makes sewing just really efficient. And here we go, the first stitch, and you'll see how quiet this machine is. just hums. Right. So there, there's the brim. I am finger pressing the, um, the top of the hat so that I can line it up with the seams. So once I have that pinned in place or clipped in place, I'm gonna sew around the circumference. I'm using a 3 8 seam allowance. Um, so a trick that I learned was when you're easing in um, pieces, especially around curves, there's gaps and it's best to put the fabric where there's, that has to do the most easing in on the bottom because the presser feet can help you get that just right. This is probably the hardest, hardest part of the entire hat is getting this the top onto the band. So there we have the lining of the hat. I am going to stitch the um, seam allowance down to the um, 
to the band. It just gives a little bit extra shape to the lining. There's the top. At this point too, I'm also gonna um, sew my label onto this because um, I don't like the stitching from the label to come through to the outside of the hat. So I've learned to stitch my label at this point. So now I'm going to sew the, um, the lining of the brim to the quilt piece of the brim. I'm gonna sew around the outer circumference first, flip it in on itself, and then do some lines to give the entire brim some um, shape. I'm sewing at like a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm trimming this down. So if I were using quilting cottons or canvas, I would also um, clip into this circle to make it a little bit easier, but the quilt is very forgiving. It has a lot of stretch to it, so um, I don't see the need to do that. So I'm flipping the um, lining back to the back of the brim piece and then I finger press it into place. Um, just trying to make sure that the lining doesn't poke out on the other side or on the front side of the brim. You can, if you want, um, iron this. Um, finger pressing works for me and it works well with the quilts, but if you're using non-quilts to do this, you might want to use an iron. So now I'm going to sew concentric circles around the brim of the hat. This gives it some structure. The first pass I make is probably a scant quarter inch in from the edge and I'm also making sure that the lining stays on the underside of the brim. Um, subsequent passes are probably about a half inch distance from each other. I sort of eyeball it really. Um, you can mark it if you like, but I just eyeball it. Again, there's already stitching on the brim because it's a quilt. So the stitching that I'm doing, if it's not perfect, is not gonna be that noticeable. The next step is to stitch the, um, the top part of the lining of the hat to the rim or the brim of the hat. It's important that the right side of the lining hat is facing the inside of the hat, but the seam allowance is on the outside of the hat. That gets covered up in the next step. Here's a little bit clearer of a view. You can see how the seam allowance of the hat lining and um, the brim will be visible on the outside, but really don't worry, it does get covered up.
So what I'm doing here is um, attaching the top of the hat to the band of the hat, and these are the quilt pieces. I'm using my clips to do that, and then I'm going to stitch around the perimeter at about a um, 3 8 inch seam allowance. So now that I've completed this part, I am going to trim the seam allowance um, like I did for the lining piece. And then I'm going to flip it right side out and stitch down the seam allowance to the band of the hat. As I was stitching the seam allowance down, I noticed there were a few small rips in the um, in the band, and it's just basically where, because of the age of the quilt, the um, stitching had come undone. These are an easy peasy little way to um, to fix those. I just go back and forth in a darning movement on the machine. So this is the last step where I attach the quilt top of the hat to the piece that includes the lining and the brim. And basically what I'm doing, I line up the seams of the um, hat top and the brim, and then I fold the hat top under about 3 8 to a half an inch, um, and then I just pin it all the way across. Um, after I'm done pinning, I slowly stitch all the way around and I am catching all the pieces. I am catching the top of the hat, I am catching the brim, and I am catching the lining. This is super slow going, but just take your time and make sure you get all those pins out as you go around. Um, and I promise it ends up looking fabulous when you're done, but really this is an awkward, an awkward sew. Um,